You know, there's a lot to be said for these old games. Not only are they a part of history, but they're amazing technical achievements in their own right. Now, I've been a fan of pointy-clicky adventure games all my life, ever since I was a little kid. And King's Quest is the granddaddy of them all. For some reason, replaying them over and over and over again, my love for them just never, ever dies. And I think over the course of my lifetime, I must have purchased and repurchased these games countless times with various collector sets, limited editions, remakes, with all new kinds of features and graphics. And there are so many of these games and I really, really want to talk about them all. So I will. But first, a little bit more about Sierra Online and Ken and Roberta Williams. Shit. Ken Williams, a programmer for IBM at the time, brought home a nifty new Apple II computer in the 70s for work purposes, which his wife Roberta quickly commandeered to play text adventure games, which were a popular medium back in the day. They were played more like choose-your-own-adventure books than full-fledged games by today's standards, just typing in simple commands like move east or look mailbox. Roberta became disillusioned with the simple and comparatively boring text-only interface and set plans to really do something new and exciting with this ever-expanding new technology because, let's face it, most of us have to stare at a never-ending stream of text on a daily basis anyway, so staring at more text is enjoyable how? Roberta introduced images into the world of adventure gaming with her very first creation, Mystery House, in 1980, and it became an instant success and amazed people that, yes indeed, something else really can be done with all this high-tech stuff. The release of Mystery House and the follow-up title Wizard and Princess stoked the fire in the gaming world and left people clamoring for more. So they used the income from the sales of these games to bring on a team of programmers who worked for over two years building Sierra completely from the ground up, and an entirely new game engine which allowed not just boring-ass still images and text, but a fully animated and colorful game world to really bring their games to life. Those two years eventually gave birth to the very first of the pointy-clicky adventure games and the flagship of the ever-growing Sierra Online, King's Quest I. call King's Quest 1, later known as Quest for the Crown, a point-and-click adventure game. There was just nothing really invented yet to facilitate such pointing and clicking. The ever-present mouse had yet to be really invented, patented, and effectively marketed. So, as the Colonel likes to tell us, use your fingers! The original King's Quest is a combination of a text-based adventure and an animated graphic adventure, so it's not even like it was in King's Quest 5, where you just select what you want to fiddle with or annoy and there you go. No, here you have to be very specific on what you want to do. Who do you want to talk to, or even what, what do you want to look at? Many of the nights where many a player would be fighting a losing battle against the text parser system just to accomplish something as simple as moving a rock or examining a tree. One of the downfalls to the early text-based parser systems is that it's nearly impossible for them to program in a response to everything that you'd want to try. So you don't know if the parser just thinks you're speaking some dialect of moon language, or just not something you need to do to complete the game. The story, relatively simple. Your name is Graham, the strongest and swarthiest knight in the kingdom of Daventry. It turns out that Daventry kind of sucks. Seeing as though the entire kingdom consists of a poverty-stricken woodcutter and his wife, a goat, and a troll. So the king sends you out on a mission to retrieve three magical artifacts to liven the place up a little. Doing so will make Graham the new king. Ah uh, yes, king of the land of goats, trolls, and poverty. But what's cool here is that in all subsequent remakes of the game, and even the novelization of the series in the King's Quest Companion, it paints a much nicer picture of Daventry. Instead of going out and seeking these treasures, these treasures actually belonged to Daventry before the king was either tricked, robbed, or conned out of them. Here it just makes it seem like you're going out to rob other people to make your king just that much nicer. Your first fetch quest well, mission is for the magic mirror, which is being held underground by a fire-breathing dragon. The nifty thing about this game is that there are at least two ways to solve each problem. The direct approach, or the more thoughtful approach, which is worth more points. The points don't really mean anything, but we were searching for any kind of bragging rights back in the 80s, and that meant getting all 158 points in King's Quest, so be it. You can choose to either kill the dragon with your dagger, or you could do the nice, but humiliating, perhaps even crippling solution by dousing the bastard with water, thus rendering him flameless and impotent. 
the area you get to wander around in is pretty large, so exploration is key. And you'll stumble across all kinds of interesting little items and equally interesting characters. You'll meet the poor as dirt woodcutter and his equally poor and dirty wife to whom you give this never-ending bowl of beef stew you just find laying around on the ground, a vicious gang of dancing leprechauns, and the gnome of unpronounceable name. This guy, this guy, is notorious. Your aim is to guess his name, and you have three guesses. Now, knowing that this game borrows so heavily from fable and fairy tale, you guess immediately that his name is Rumpelstiltskin, and you'd be wrong. The only clue that you have is found in a hut a couple hundred miles away, saying it's good to think backwards. Hmm. Okay, well putting that logic to the test, you come up with the name Nick Stilslabrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
King's Quest. I need some water. Hang on. You can't really call King's Quest 1 letter name Quest for... Why do I keep calling it Quest for Glory? You can't really call King's Quest 1 letter known. You can choose to either... Gah! You can choose to either... Gah! You can't really call Quest... Fuck! You can't really call King's Quest 1 later known as Quest for Glory. No, it's not Quest for Glory. It's Quest for the Crown. Cultural significance. Quest for the Glory... Fighting with the Parser system. Is it just... The... Doing so will make Grand New King! Grand New, grand new King! How about the New King? You can't really call Quest for Glo- I did it again! King's Quest 1! 